Okay, what I want to talk to you about today is what is your superpower? Because I think that everybody has at least one superpower. And my belief on the whole superpower front is that it comes from something not great that happened to you. If you look at all these superheroes, generally speaking, there's like a nuclear explosion or they get bitten by some kind of thing or and then superpower. It's always some horrible thing happens, then superpower. But that's actually what happens in real life. You go through life and then some horrible ghastly thing happens and then superpower. But the thing is, when you're looking at superheroes, it just it happens as a matter of course, you know, deadly horrible thing happens, superpower. It doesn't show the number of superheroes who get bitten by the thing or exposed to the radiation and don't develop superpowers. Not because the superpowers aren't there to be developed, but because they just don't recognize them or they don't develop them. In real life, you get the opportunity to develop superpowers, but they're not delivered instantaneously. The, the thing that helps you to create the superpower happens and everyone around you generally views it as a negative thing. Most people think, oh yes, horrible thing, poor me. And they don't look into the horrible thing enough to find the superpower. So uh, an example, for instance, my superpower is that I'm a Bardas. As you can tell by my name, Rebecca Bardas, um, that's not a coincidence. I wasn't born with that name. I just, I recognize my superpower sufficiently that I went to Deadpool and changed my name. Um, most people's superpowers, they, most people don't step into their superpowers, they don't recognize what the superpowers are, and they hide them, and it wouldn't occur to them to kind of be that person in the light of day. Um, I actually spent a lot of time hiding my superpowers and not being that person in the light of day, and then eventually I thought, screw it, this is who I am, and I'm gonna change my name to reflect it. So the superpowers of being a bard or being a bardess are that I can, uh, I tell stories and I sing and I am a poet and I write word medicine and I speak visions and dreams into existence for people and I see things for them that they can't see for themselves and I help them to manifest them and it's, it sounds magical because it is and it's wonderful and I love having those superpowers. The way that I got those wasn't by just kind of like lucking out. The way I got those was by having a really serious car accident when I was 10, trashing the left hand side of my brain and then my right brain having to take over and it turns out your right brain does some really cool stuff which is kind of visionary and very woo woo and reaches out into the cosmos and finds random bits of information that other people don't have access to. So I got that by by breaking something really badly and then having to teach myself to read and write and speak again. So it, it wasn't a fun experience. So what I want to um, urge you to do is look into your life and look at the things that you see as problems and see where the superpowers are in those. See where those things can make you a superhero. And sometimes you might have a superpower that's unbelievably awesome. Like you might have some unbelievably, oh bless you Lisa, I've, I really love that conversation we had earlier, you're amazing. Um, you, you might have some really weird superpower, it might be something really strange like you understand what animals are feeling and you can kind of talk to the animals like Dr. Doolittle, my mum's got that one actually. Um, it might be something cool like that, it might be uh, something like, oh, thanks Mimi. <laughs> it might be something like, um, you know, a spiritual kind of superpower or some kind of strange thing. It mightn't be that. It might be something that doesn't on the surface look that you might miss it because it might be more subtle. Your superpower might be listening in a world where everyone speaks. The person who can actually listen is a superhero. The person who is actually capable of shutting the hell up and listening to somebody and really hearing them 
and really witnessing their story and being there with them is you know that is definitely a superpower the ability to to listen is that is a you know that's a superhero thing being present with someone that's a superhero power just just being present just being the kind of person who can close down all your tabs and be there uh, the kind of person who when you you know when you're in a restaurant and you're surrounded by people who are all on their their phones and no one's kind of connecting and no one's talking to each other if you're the person who's sitting opposite someone and making eye contact and listening to them and talking to them and valuing their presence superhero how are you not a superhero when everyone is just kind of marketing themselves the whole time and not actually listening how are you not a superhero if you can listen? Your superhero ability might be humility. It might be humility. And it doesn't necessarily come from always, you know, being, having humility, being humble doesn't necessarily, you don't always start off that way. Stuff happens in life and you, you may find that gift inside, wrapped up in a load of crap, basically. And somebody that I can think of who who really has that is um, someone who didn't used to have it, who used to be kind of, she had some ego stuff going on. And then she found this kind of humbleness, this, this humility, and that's Jane Orloff, who's one of my, one of my um, former clients, an amazing person. But she has an amazing degree of, of um, humbleness, humility, and just that's, that's probably her superpower actually so these these things they don't necessarily always on the surface look like something that uh, you know someone from Hogwarts might have your superpower may be maybe empathy it may be that you've been uh, you've been hurt and you've been hurt enough and often enough and badly enough that you can feel the pain of other people it's just broken you through it's like your your heart is just broken open so far that you've got the gift of being able to feel everybody else's emotions which is amazing if you're dealing with someone who doesn't know what their emotions are and you know what their emotions are now this next step to that of course is knowing when to shut up and not tell them what their emotions are oh i know what your emotions are your emotions are this <laughs> like, that doesn't always get out that well but the fact that you can do that that is a um, that is a superpower being naturally very very confident and being confident or being confident not even naturally confident but being confident because you had to be because you know maybe you're in a situation where unless you were confident you it wasn't going to work out that well for you you know some bad stuff was happening and you had to be confident that's a superpower um mimi took a stand taking a stand is a superpower i'm so proud of you mimi that's amazing well done that's so cool so yes be, and being able to do that actually being able to set boundaries for yourself and others there's there's so many things that um, that don't they, like I said they don't necessarily you might overlook them in yourself but they actually are they make you a superhero they help you to um, to help other people and I was actually doing some training for a, a course that I did um, on reselfing that finished tonight earlier on and I was talking about a uh, kind of tradition of quilting in the US this this idea of, of a, a whole group of people getting together usually usually women um, getting together in this tradition of, of getting together and and taking these little scraps of material and patching them all together and it, it not just being about creating a quilt but about actually creating a community like a, a shared experience and the fact that actually patchwork quilts if you think about it, that kind of arose from a non-perfect situation. Generally speaking, 
you'd want to create something you'd want to create something with a really awesome expensive wonderful piece of material but back in the early days in in america a lot of the times you you were having to make do with what you had you know and some stuff wore out and a tablecloth wore out and a you know some curtains wore out and most of it was useless but there was a little patch that was all right and you chopped that out and you kept that to one side and then eventually you had enough that you could stitch all of these little bits together and you could make something and it turns out that patchwork quilts are amazing looking and they're wonderful and they're creative and they're fabulous but they're essentially initially if you look at kind of where they came from you know that they're, they're they're there because of necessity they're there because things wear out they're there because of little scraps of material that you can't really do an awful lot with on their own but you put them together and you stitch them together in, in with creativity and you get something magnificent and the same is true with with society the same is true with you know bringing together little scraps of kind of parts of the community that maybe maybe there's some stuff going on that's not quite great and but there's there's some people who who want to connect with other people and they want to kind of cross boundaries and they want to hang out with people who aren't quite like them and they're cool with that and you get a whole bunch of people together and then you get some people who are willing to stitch and you stitch the whole thing together and you get this amazing patchwork quilt and to me as as a foreigner to the US you know I'm in England at the moment it's the middle of the night but for me I always kind of looked at the United States as this glorious patchwork quilt of all of the it's basically like this experiment in what happens if we take the whole world put it on one bit of ground you know we'll, you, we'll take this, this little patch of land we'll put the whole world there see what happens <laughs> and it's it's this amazing kind of it, sewn together pieced together microcosm of the world on this one little patch of land and it's it's a glorious it's glorious and um, and I think one of the superpowers that people can have is is like I said before is empathy and I, f I feel like and I was saying in this training that part of that kind of stitching together things and communities which which I believe ultimately leads I'm not being grand here but to world peace I think as as within so without you know micro and macro it all kind of links in together but part of that is taking all of these different groups of people different uh, different faiths different backgrounds different religions different religions faiths pretty similar um, different races and so on and so on and so on and then using the, the thread of empathy to stitch everything together and part of part of that is um, not expecting everybody to agree with you not expecting everybody to like you but being able to find kind of peace within who you are as a person being able to kind of find peace with your own inner demons so that when you're dealing with somebody else who doesn't necessarily agree with you you're still able to see their perspective you're still able to to think okay well I wouldn't vote the way they voted but I can see where they're coming from given their background or I can see where they're coming from given the circumstances that they're in I can see how they got there and I like this about them you know I might not particularly want to talk politics with this person but I really like whatever about them I really like the fact that they're they're really generous with cakes <laughs> whatever it is you know that is um, thank you thanks for all the shares it just told me I got loads of shares that that I think is the path to world peace I don't think world peace is a top-down deal I don't think it is uh, you know the president of some country or the prime minister of some country or all countries is gonna just suddenly one day wave a magic presidential wand and say and world peace because it doesn't make sense to them you know it's not it's a big business not being at peace with other countries. It's, there's lots involved with that. I won't go into that, but there's, you know, it's, it's kind of profitable. So I think world peace, when it happens, and I believe that peace will break out, I think it will, 
But when it happens, and I've said this on a previous video, but I'm going to reiterate it for people who haven't heard it before, it's it's going to be it's going to be bottom up. It's going to be people like us just getting on our little webcams and talking to each other as human beings and sharing ideas and agreeing and disagreeing and and sharing stuff around and saying, I, you know, this thing that this person says, I kind of agree with this or. I'm not really necessarily completely on the same page as this person, but when they're talking about such and such, I really get that, that resonates with me. Or us quoting each other, us listening to each other, that is this putting together of this patchwork quilt. And none of us actually needs to do that much to make it happen. Your, your kind of superpower, if you like, might just be that you feel passionately about something and you get on a Facebook Live and you talk about that thing that you are open with your heart, you're open with your mind, you're open with your soul and you share, and then other people share, and as a consequence, there's a little ripple of peace that goes out into the world. Or there's a little ripple of, you know, wouldn't it be better if we did this? Um, and, and that helps to move everything along. So I, I want to kind of encourage you to, uh, to look at what, what is your superpower and then how can you share that? How can you, how can you be part of raising, woo woo moment, raising the vibration of the planet so that we all connect on a better level, so that we are all better able to, um, to fulfill our, our destinies on this planet. Um, it's not that any one of us has to do everything nobody has to do everything you just have to do a little bit uh, you just have to make peace with something and it might be somebody who has a different opinion or it might be peace with yourself peace with your past it might be something that happened to you that you haven't dealt with and it just keeps coming up over and over again in relationships in business environments in just events that happen to you and maybe you need to look into that make peace with it. So look at the relationship between you and you. And in doing that, that will kind of go out there and it will show up in your relationships with other people. And then, then they will be inspired by you and it'll show up in their relationships with other people. And the way we are now, the degree to which we're all connected on social media, I mean, people think nothing of having a thousand friends on Facebook, but literally kind of 10, 20 years ago, who did you know with a thousand friends except like celebrities? We, we have huge networks now. A little tiny microscopic change in your way of looking at the world and you're you just putting that out there to a few hundred people, that has the potential to change the world.